Hey, what's up? How's it? Aloha. Welcome to Culturized. It is me, McCunny. Welcome to the space that we've created to talk and share and learn culture, whether it's social, whether it's ethnic, whether it's native. Uh, I truly, I'm a little bit biased, but I believe in, in Hawaii, one of the beauties of Hawaii is that um, uh, we have so many cultures within Hawaii and the world, I think, can learn from us how we get along and, you know, and, and, you know, we may not have to like each other, but once we learn about each other's cultures, empathy will kick in and we'll get a lot, a, a lot better. And so many different cultures in Hawaii. And this season, I'm so excited to invite. I, I feel like I'm, I'm sitting, I'm gonna just about to have tea with my aunties because we know one of the first cultures and ethnicities to come into the uh, islands of Hawaii were Chinese. And I've been wanting for a long time. Growing up in Hawaii, we, we know all these Chinese things, right? Um, but do we really know, right? So I brought t two of my aunties and my friends here. Uh, Michelle Choi, in, in introduce yourselves and tell us uh, about yourselves really quick. Okay, as Makani said, I'm Michelle Choi and um, I've been involved with the Chinese Chamber of Commerce for close to, uh, well, going on my 48th year. Wow. But I just want to let you know, but I, in my real job, and that's all volunteer, but in my real job, I was uh, in the dental field for about 37 years in uh, endodontics, uh, root canal therapy. Oh, I'm going to need one soon here. Talk really close to that. There you go. Um, I like how you said uh, Chinese Chamber of Commerce was just your volunteer work, but you know most of your time was spent there anyway, right? That was your real job. That's just like almost my, my family. I mean, really? that is like, there's, you know, people have their churches, their other things, but Everything has been the Chinese chamber. I mean, um, and I don't like bring this up, but I was a contestant only years ago, and that's how I got involved. A contestant for? Um, the Narcissus pageant oh. and the 25th anniversary. So it's been yeah. going on that long. Yeah, so we're in our 73rd year now. Okay, so Chinese Chamber of Commerce, you brought uh, your friend with you, and there's a connection with Chinese Chamber of Commerce. Introduce yourself, and then I want to find, I want to share with our friends uh, your connection to the Chinese Chamber of Commerce. Okay, my name is Linda Louie, good friends with Michelle. Uh, my great-grandfather, Fong In, was one of the founders of Chinese Chamber in 1911. Not, wow. Yeah, and then he had a son named Henry In, which is my grandfather. And I would just say I'm a product of my ancestors. I like that. Say that again. I'm a product of my ancestors. And to, to say that is, is really heavy because to be a product of your ancestors, you have to make sure that everything you do in your life is what they did, right? And sometimes even better because they always want us to be better, right? Um, both of you, Chinese ethnicity. Um, Michelle, where did you grow up? I grew up in uh, Nuuanu and attended. So I'm a, I'm a public school girl. Nice. Yes, Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Uh, yes, we just had one uh, a yeah. Roosevelt on. And Wait, then, so yeah. from Nuuanu. Um, and I went to Ko uh, Kawana. Kawana, 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 Kawana. Oh, okay, yeah, so yeah. you did that whole. Did you walk to school or were you privileged to get dropped off? Uh, privileged to get dropped <laughs> nice. off, yeah, which was nice, yeah. And then the, you went to school where? Okay, I went to Punahou. Nice. Hey, look at uh, that. Okay, Kelly's over here. Yeah, Puno. <laughs> class of 70. I have a very famous class. I have Jim you Scott, do. Connie Lau, you Like et what, what was going on in that time? Everybody was in 19, the end of the 60s into the 70s, Punahou was just producing like these amazing people, right? Obviously. Yes, yes, yes. I, um, I, I also want to share that my grandfather, Henry Inn, was best friends with Dr. Fox. Really? So, 29 of us went to Punahou. My tell, daughter's number 29. Tell everybody, it's, it's people just heard Dr. Fox, they're like, Dr. Oh yeah, Fox. I'm sorry, the former president of Punahou School. That's, uh, so you guys, growing up, uh, public school, private school, uh, where did you grow up? What what city? What town? Uh, Makiki. Makiki. Makiki Heights. The yeah. most congested place on earth. <laughs> what was that like? L let's start with Makiki. Since then. What was it like growing up in Makiki? Well, we were on the Heights, so okay. it was very very nobody around really yeah the, um, okay it's heights, lower heights. lower makiki heights right by the pumping station so really? we don't even have people across the street what well, that was the um there's that park now the triangle mm -hmm, park mm -hmm. so you're and there was nobody there yeah uh -huh. really and we could walk to school it's a block and a half what was it like growing up in nuanu you know i look at nuanu as um shangri-la paradise because the 
the weather is so nice and quiet and clean. And of course, when I got married, I moved away, but I always wanted to come back to Nu'uana, which I did after my mom passed away. But I just feel like the air is so clean and just so, it just feels, I, I really describe a Shangri-La. I like that. We're sitting down. This is Culture as We're sitting down with Michelle and Linda having, I'm going to be educated right now, and hopefully you are too, because they are a wealth of knowledge. This is what we do on Culturized. Bringing you what matters. Viewers can receive the Star Advertiser digital full access subscription for just $9.95 per month. Go to StarAdvertiser.com and click on subscribe. Use the code AHIGHTHING. For all your money needs, Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union is here for you. Visit HIFICU.com. Hey, what's up? How's it? Aloha. Welcome to Culture Eyes. It is me, Makani. I'm, I'm, I'm like all excited because I'm, I'm such a, um, I love to learn history. I love to talk about, I love connections. I, I love all these things. That we, that's what we do on Culture Eyes. I'm so intrigued, but I want to share with you, if you're listening and watching in, a little bit more about the Chinese culture. And you know me, you have to go find your Chinese friends to learn about it. Um, we're talking about Michelle growing up in Uwano, Linda growing up in Makiki. And I, I'm, in my head, the whole time I'm thinking Makiki and there was nobody around. I live in Makiki now and I'm just like, oh man, it's just buildings everywhere. Now, I'll pose the question obviously for both of you and, and whoever wants to answer first. Um, what was it like growing up in, as, as kids, obviously ethnically Chinese, but culturally and traditionally, was it very Chinese culture very prominent in the household? Like what are things that you did within the household growing up that was very Chinese, Michelle? Um, for me, it was, um, you know, Baisan, uh, going to the grave, Qingling, um, April. I've been doing that, uh, God, since I was very young. We were brought to the grave um, in April and to pay respect to our ancestors. And so it, our family just con, uh, continues till this day. And in fact, I'm kind of in charge of when April comes to bring the family together, send out the emails, and and we go to the grave. So that was a big, big thing for me uh, as far as, yeah. So when you were up. young, you had to go with parents and grandparents, and yeah. now you're in charge of letting everybody know. Right. Well, I mean, what what is it with, we all know growing up, the term, oh, Chinese graveyard, Chinese graveyard. Um, it was almost a place, not almost a place, it was a place everybody wanted to hang out for some reason. Why is that? Is it because of that? Well, no, actually, it's not. We were forced to, let's put it this way. <laughs> you Your right, parents you? just bring you there. <laughs> but for me, um, and that's my part of my involvement with the, um, uh, the Chinese chamber, that I brought back classes. Um, uh, I brought classes because I was, I wanted to know why in the world am I even doing this? And I found someone, and that's why I bring those classes. When when was that about? How were, were you already in your adult life or younger when you realized all these things that I did growing up? I do them because that's just what we do. But now you really want to. Okay, now why do I really do it? What, what were you in high school? Was it after high school, college, or what year? adult life well it was probably during a narcissist time so okay. i've had instructors from there for 30 years so that's when it piqued my interest and said oh i found these people i go wait a minute why am i doing why are we doing this <laughs> and so when i go to the grave i actually i've actually made um cards that tell what you do you know um, i laminate it so if it rains in um right. over the kolau side you know it doesn't matter but i kind of even sometimes bring a speaker and i tell people what it is and i tell my grandkids i tell the family you should be knowing what you're doing. Why are you here? I like that. You should know what and why we do this. So that's in April. What was it called? Qingming. Qingming. Yeah. Uh, things that you did growing up that you remember prominently that were very culturally Chinese. You know, my mother called it Baisan, mm. and it's always in April. Okay. Okay. And so then, you did it as well. Yes, we did it, and there's always a pig. And there's always dishes and they pour tea. And if, like, when my father smoked, my mother put a pack of cigarettes or, you know, things like things that. Things that they, okay. Yeah. And I didn't understand when we were small that we had to do this and we'd run all around the graves and all that. But as an adult, I understand it brought the family together. Uh, I love that. Yeah. Which is what, because uh, you actually have a meal, like dim sum meal after. And um, with Michelle, she kept that going by having Ching reunions. 
like hundreds of people. She, <laughs> right. she really kept it going. See, our family just, as they got older, it just nobody does it. See, I, I love that fact that the tradition is carried on um, because a lot of times, you know, when somebody passes away in the family, it's like you, you gather at that one time and then you'll go maybe on Memorial Day. That's about it. Um, I love that. I want you guys to continue to share with me. If you're joining us on Culturize, uh, we are learning some Chinese culture, things that you, you may think you know, but we're telling you why. Like they said, you need to know why you do these things and what these traditions and customs are about. Uh, you got any, if you're watching us on YouTube, comment down below. I want you to share your experiences uh, with the Chinese culture. Or if you have questions, that's what Culturize is all about. Air and Sea Travel Center, best group tours throughout the world. Let's go travel and see the world to make beautiful memories. Call 808-951-9800 today. Long's Drugs is always here for Hawaii, providing your family with their local favorites and accessible health and wellness services to keep you safe and healthy. Make Long's a part of your day. Windows Hawaii. Trust Windows Hawaii. Hey, what's up? How's it? Aloha, it is me, Makani. Welcome back to Culturize. I'm, I'm excited. About my, my brain is like, oh, I love this stuff. I love learning. I love connections. Uh, we're sitting down with uh, two of my friends. Uh, Michelle and Linda, we're talking Chinese culture, and thank you guys for sharing about that. If you're just joining us, we're talking about Chinese graveyard. We, for some reason, even non-Chinese, we always like to hang out at the Chinese graveyard. But um, in your family, you called that that time in April to go celebrate and and come with family. What was it called? Bai San. And then for your family, well, the whole thing is Qingming. I mean, no, but Bai mm. San is like the ritual. Oh, yeah. I see. Oh, yeah. Okay. I see. So Baisan is the ritual, ritual of, of doing it. Yeah. Ah, right. see? Right. We're learning some things. <laughs> and so the reason why I'm pointing on the side is because we have somebody here that has another connection with us, and we're going to talk about her soon. And she's like, no, don't do it. But um, so Chinese culture, Chinese graveyard is a huge thing. I remember, um, okay, let me ask you this question because it just came to my mind. I referred to my great grandfather as Popo, right? I didn't even know if we were Chinese or not, but um, on the island of Lanai, he was one of the first ones that, I mean, it sounds weird, but he's the first ones that were buried in our cemetery on Lanai. He doesn't, he just had a pile of rocks basically. But all I know was that he was Popo. Is, is oh, gong gong. The, my, the, the, my mom called him that. And my grandfather and grandmother used to refer to him as Popo. Oh, the, you gotta go. You gotta go clean Popo Cemetery. So is oh, that? Oh, clean Popo Cemetery. Clean Popo Cemetery. Yeah. Oh. No, well, Popo is usually what? grandmother. The, yeah. And Gogo okay, is grandfather. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But unless he's using another word like um, PAU or something. I have no you know? idea because my. Pop. <laughs> yeah, something. Oh, so <laughs> what are different words that we use? So Popo is for the, the, grandmother. The, yeah. And the Gong Gong, Gong is, is grandfather. grandfather. Yeah. Huh. Tai. Maybe Gong I wasn't paying attention. Tai Gong and Tai Po. Tai is like the older, the uh, great. 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 Oh yeah. no way. Yeah. Big. Yeah, I'm learning yeah, yeah. some things yeah. now. Besides, besides those celebrations and those rituals, uh, other things that I'm trying to think things that we we grew up in Hawaii, even if we were outside of the Chinese culture that we've seen all the time. One of the great things I love about um, the Chinese culture is they you guys always did things together. You made sure that it was together. When do you guys know the first Chinese like documented that came to Hawaii? Mm, no, but I know all I know is that the Chinese j jumped the boat, and that's how they ended up on the island. Really? Yeah, the boat, you know, came up by, and they, uh -huh. um, and they, the Chinese guys jumped off the boat, and they ended up staying here. And that's how it kind of started. It's about yeah. eighteen forty something. Yeah. I really? Think. And so, because they were, the, from what I understand, they were the very first ones here. Um, was so we're, we're thinking now on Oahu. Was Oahu the first place you guys know in in your in your uh, knowledge? Did Chinese come to Oahu first, or what island were they? Do you guys know? Because they established here, because this was what the first Chinatown, or was it? He no, Hilo was Japanese more. I don't. Do you guys know? Um, so, with that said, what are things in on Oahu now, or in Hawaii in general, that you think the Chinese contributed to? Because there's a lot. Do, do you know there are flowers and fruits that people don't realize came from China? Really? You know, you get the, your lychee, um, the peacocky. It's, I went up to China and go, hey, how Not. come they have? Yeah. What? And even they have, have hibiscus up there, too. So there is a lot of flowers that were brought over and foods, you know, and um, I, I lost my train of thought. Light, but, yeah. that, well, that's true. I didn't know. Just, because 
I, I found out the reason why the people in China liked Hawaii because they said the climate was kind of the mm. almost the same. That's what I heard. It was almost yeah. this is what I heard that right. it was almost the same. So it was like being in China, and so I guess that's somehow it ended up coming over here because. It's like I said, when I went to China, I was shocked to see a lot of the Hawaii things. Really? Yeah. So I doubt the Hawaiians went and brought it up over there. You know? And vice versa. See, yeah. that's that's what I love. I, I know Hawaii, uh, There's all, we always had connections with other countries because Hawaiian monarchs circumnavigated the world, the only ones. Um, so I like that connection. Coming up, there's another connection that we were talking about earlier. Um, if you guys are listening and watching, think Iolani Palace. Uh, think of a, a Hawaiian monarch. And you have a huge connection um, and a lot of stories that you guys have with just Hawaii and Hawaiian culture itself. So that's what we're doing. We're, we're finding connections. Uh, we hear it all the time. You ask a lot of people in Hawaii, oh, what's your ethnicity? Oh, Hawaiian Chinese. Hawaiian Ch Chinese is there. Uh, they've, we've, or they've been in Hawaii for so long and they've contributed so much uh, to, the, to the contemporary Hawaiian uh, culture today. So that's what we're doing on Culture Eyes, sitting with Linda and Michelle. We're going to talk a little bit more about Chinese culture. Let's learn some stuff. At Aloha Kia, you know a guy. Visit them at any of their seven dealerships statewide. Purchase a brand new Kia using Aloha Kia Express. Learn more at alohakia.com. Hey, what's up? How's it? Aloha, it is me, Makani. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we are learning and talking and sharing about Chinese culture. And you know what I love? Uh, uh, that when you folks showed up, you brought all these binders, you brought these pictures. Can can we share some of the, because we off camera and before we started, there were so many things. I want to get right to, there was a photo you I seen. Um, you have a family member that made furniture. Well, well first there was a photographer. That well, was grand, well, first. That was Gung Gung. Great Gung, Tai Gung. <laughs> tai Gung. You learned now, great grandfather <laughs> was Fong In and he had a shop. Okay. Called Fong In. Okay. It was Wh famous. Where was it? On Nuanu Avenue. And then it was in Waikiki. It's the beginning of Waikiki where Kioya was. It used to be the Fong In store. Really? Yeah. So what, what happened is they serviced all the um, uh, white people, like the, <laughs> yeah. like, like the Dillinghams, uh -huh. the Cooks, the Judds, the Spaldings. Yeah, all those, all those yeah. famous holy, <clears throat> holy names. So um, when my grandfather learned English, he came here when he was nine, Henry in, and then the um, people would come in and say, I want to talk to the boy. He speaks English. And so ended up my great grandfather and my grandfather with Mrs. Cook started the Honolulu Art Academy. What? Yeah. <laughs> so did Henry, you, you use the, the name Henry. Mm -hmm. Did he change to Henry when he came here or was Henry a given name when he was back? Oh, well, I, I think this is a great story. Okay, Fong In, his real name is Yun Kwok In, but he, Yuen, Yun Kwok Yuen, but he was smart enough to change his name to a very easy to remember name is how I feel. <laughs> so Henry In is his given name. Really? Yeah, and then, um, um, so. Wait, wait, was that, was that, was that kind of a standard practice when they would come over to Hawaii or when they would leave China, they would change their names? No, they basically would combine names. Like you always ah. hear Yi Hop this uh -huh. and the, almost all the Chinese names down Chinatown or Sun Wo, whatever uh -huh. it be. Two people, three people, partners' names. Really? Yeah, so, so they were just part, Already they knew that we're going to have to uh, connect. So he, uh, what, what Art Academy? No, Honolulu, Art, Honolulu Academy. Art Academy. Yeah. So they started that as a photographer. No, as a uh, antique dealer. Antique dealer. I so seen some in their antique shop. They built furniture for the royalty. For all these yeah. royalty, and there was a picture in here. I want to look at it, and then we'll, hopefully we'll try and put it up on the screen. But the first thing you you showed it to me, and I was like, "Whoa, that's the bed that sits in um, Queen Queen Emma summer." Okay. Oh, wait, this is let me see. It should be on the back of that one. I think. Well, we're looking. So I see. I love the fact that you have all these. Oh, that right one. here. <laughs> Hopefully you put it up on the screen. If not, uh, this photo right here. Uh, as soon as you showed it to me, I was like, that bed looks familiar. And then I read the caption. Your great grandfather made this for Queen Emma. Mm -hmm. That is crazy to me. And this is all made out of coal. Yes. And then here's another one. And we're going to challenge you folks that are watching. Um, and then this crib right this crib was and you from your recollection this was made for a princess mm -hmm. hopefully put up on the screen if you guys know 
what prince because i i don't know we don't remember i'm thinking maybe Ka'iulani, this is made for a princess of royalty of hawaiian hawaiian royalty whose crib was this man and so this just went to auction they auctioned this off yes that, wow. yes do you know how much it went for uh no but what, what, as I've been researching mm -hmm. them, I found out that he has furniture in Washington Place. For, it, really? it's so many different places. I'm so shocked. So all of these prestigious locations, Washington Place, Queen Emma Summer Palace. Does he have anything at Iolani Palace? Yes. Really? Yes. What does he have there? Uh, um, it, it's in there. I, I, some tables and maybe the bed. The bed Serious. that's there. Yes, that is crazy to me. Now, speaking of Iolani Palace, um, there's another picture that you showed me. So the, we're, we want to get that in the next segment. So I'm my mind is blown right now to have a connection like that. Your great grandparents uh, did some amazing things for Hawaii. First of all, I got to say mahalo, mahalo, mahalo to both of you for coming to share a culture. I, I love learning. We're going to keep you here because if you're watching on KTV, go to YouTube for the extended version. I'm not done learning about the Chinese culture right here on Culture Eyes. Hey, what's up? How's it? Aloha, this is Bima Kani. Welcome to Culture Eyes. This is the extended version. If you joined us on KTV previously uh, to get uh, the, the prequel to this, we're sitting down with Michelle Choi, Linda Liu, and we're talking about Chinese culture in Hawaii. I'm so intrigued because we grew up hearing it, knowing it. We all have Chinese friends, and we all knew that sometimes our Chinese friends had to go do something with the family. They had these rituals they had to do, and we never, we knew, but we really didn't know. That's what we're finding out right now. Um, Michelle, try involved with Chinese Chamber of Commerce for, and I, I love the fact that you, you always say you volunteered and it's something, it's your responsibility, right? Um, but it's been now 40 plus, how many total? 48 years this year. 48 yeah. years and the amazing thing is you, one of your uh, great, -grandfather. great grandfather started the Chinese Chamber of Commerce. Um, and all this stuff that's being unfolded, I, I love this because things that we're familiar with. We talked about uh, Queen Emma's bed uh, that your great grandfather, Ta Tai Gong, uh, that made. He made uh, a crib for, we don't know what princess, but hopefully you guys know. Uh, I want to see other things. So okay, you took pictures of Duke. So, and again, we talked about Henry In was, was the name that he used My grandfather. as a photographer. Mm -hmm. 1945, he took a picture of Duke Kahanamoku. Isn't it? It's, and you know what's amazing about this is, th these are photos. It's it's almost as though it's it's like his collection. Like you see all these famous photos of Duke and everywhere else, but this is almost as I like looking at this because it's a photo I've never seen before, and a lot of people never seen before. Um, was he? Was it? was being a photographer because people called him like he was an official photographer. He wasn't just like some guy that was oh, like, oh, I want to take some pictures. What, what, what kind of people was he a photographer for? Okay. So he, for some reason, he was so sought after as a photographer that his photos of uh, flowers, people, places is uh, in 50 years of Paradise of the Pacific mag magazines. Really? Yeah, that started in 1888, 19, and then he started from, as soon as he was like 20-something, um, and he could get a camera, they used his pictures. So, and and th this, this was a time that it wasn't, it wasn't easy to use a camera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? you, mm -hmm. had to, um, you had to set up a bunch of other things. So I just want to show you this, that he took a picture of the uh, skyline where Diamond Head, but he did this every single year of his life. So there, there's a book. It used to be at the Hawaii Visitors Bureau to show the growth of the area. Holy moly. I almost swore just now. <laughs> um, wow. Another picture, uh, hopefully we can put up. Um, it's a, this would be from, I want to say, up at, yeah, uh, Pu'u Ala Ku'u, uh, which is known as Tantless today, um, looking down uh, into uh, the metropolis of Honolulu or pre-metropolis of Honolulu. This is an amazing photo. I, I like it because all you can see is the plantation roofs, right? Um, you can see all of Diamond Head. Wow. Sorry, I'm having a moment. And it's like, I'm just, you know, when you look at these things and you start trying to figure out where you, where things are, 
So he would take this over time. Mm -hmm. he, he was a person of foresight. I love that. But you have to look at the one in the back. That's my absolute favorite. It's the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. And it, they always used to say Waikiki was swamp land. Uh -huh. And this right. is the pictures you show you all the trees. It was swamp land. Royal Hawaiian Hotel, 1940. You, and okay, so if you're looking at the picture and it's on screen, wow. you can only see the top of the Royal. And from what I understand, the Royal Hawaiian Hotel was kind of mimicked to be built uh, in a, a Moroccan style uh, architecture. But look at the, look at the, um, the coconut trees, the new, loaded. Because I think right where this picture is, is if, if I'm not correct, somebody let me know on YouTube, but I believe this is Helumoa. Uh, Helumoa was, was uh, I forget what queen, I think Lilo Kalani's home was right where the royal was sitting, but Helumoa was that. But man, look at that uh, Royal Hawaiian Hotel and your grandfather took this photo. I'm trying to think of the vantage point. What, what vantage point would this be from? What was across the street from the royal? Uh, more swamp land <laughs> because yeah, all the, the canal. Yeah, where the, the canal. canal is today. Yeah, yeah. that it's gonna be that far side. back. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What? A, okay. There's. Okay. A, I just want one last one. No, let's Kalakaua do a bunch Avenue. of them. Avenue. Kalakaua Avenue. I don't think there's too many of pictures like that one. So, Kurt and Cody, our production staff, um, they, we we are always talking about we should do a walk down Kalakaua, right? Uh, this is crazy. This looks like, if you didn't know, if you didn't see the caption, or you didn't tell me what it was, I, it looks like I'm looking at some street in Hilo. It's ju it's dirt, right? Some coconut trees on the side. There's no big buildings bigger than a telephone pole. and But you wouldn't know until you look at the end of the photo, there's just a glimpse of uh, Le'ahi, or Kaimana Hilo, or as you know, as Diamond Head. Um, do you know what year this was? About the same time, 1940? Probably. Just, I just happened to have that set. That's so <laughs> crazy. <laughs> uh, Kalakaua Avenue, 1940. Um, that's it. That's enough. No, I, <laughs> no, I'm, no that's not it. <laughs> no, no, I'm, it's I'm, enough. <laughs> Iolani Palace. He took a photo of Iolani Palace. Uh, and we had a conversation about their... Okay, Wait, this, this is, is, this the, is, this this is, is where the statue is, right? Okay, so this is... Kamehameha statue. What is, is that? The territorial building? What is, what was it? Was it called? I, Where the I Kamehameha? Think it was. I think that's it a was, territorial yeah. building, or or as most of you may probably know, as uh, McGarrett's office for five zero, right? Um, if you can see this photo, Kamehameha statue, territorial building. This was also in the nineteen forties. Nineteen forties. I love it because you see the car the, when they let cars drive around that roundabout. Um, are these trees still here? Uh, yeah, so after after they got this bogus some some bogus tree cutting company <laughs> said he got a, he got a, an order to uh, cut down all the trees. They cut down all the trees, all six of those around that circle. So these are royal palms. And so many many years later, I think like ten years later, they they were so upset. Still, they said let's put it back. So they actually dug holes and brought back trees. So the trees you see today are there, but there was a time. When there were no trees. Can you imagine being that guy? It's like you're the yard guy, you're the maintenance guy, and it's like if somebody said, cut down the trees, the royal palms that stood around Kamehameha's statue. It, okay, is it just me? Isn't the statue taller today? I know, yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> oh, that's the angle they took it at. I mean, mm, I, could yeah. be. I, okay, if, you're, if, if we got the picture up on the screen... I know when they put the laser, it looks right. like it's so high, right? Like they might have made it higher. I think yeah. they put them on a, another pedestal. Pedestal. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. And then, oh, so I uh, see. I'm. I'm That's just downtown. <laughs> wow. Okay, I'm trying to get this vantage point. Bishop what is Street. Bishop Street. Yeah. Going towards Mauka. Mm-hmm. But Bishop Street Bishop looks is, the same. Yeah, but it's. It, Bishop Street now is one way. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. This was too, okay, I see where we are. Um, okay, so to the, to the right of this photo is the corner of Bishop and where Nimitz is now, I'm assuming. 
If you see the photo, if the photo's up on the screen, comment down below. Tell us where you think this is. This is 1940 downtown. Wow. Okay. See, I get excited with things like this. And and to remind everybody, your grandfather was a photographer. And he was a photographer for people like Doris Duke. Mm -hmm. um, what would she do? Just say, hey. Henry, come follow me around and take a picture of my amazing life. <laughs> Is that what it was, basically? <laughs> he hobnobbed with all of those people. Really? So whenever they the VIPs were in town, they would call Henry to photograph them. So this is what I'm thinking. This is just popped into my head because we know that a lot of people know that the Mormon church is really good. They have really good archives. But I, the Chinese as well. So if anybody ever wanted to make connections to their past, is they got to get in touch with you guys. Look at Iolani Palace, right? Iolani Palace. Um, this is, the, the back says 1945, which is a picture of Aloha Tower, but um, look how small the royal palms are compared to the palace. And, and think about it now, right, when you visit. Um, if you've never visited Iolani Palace, I had Paula Khan on the show. Uh, Iolani Palace is, is the only royal palace on, on U.S. soil. Um, wow. This is kind of crazy to me. And those two light posts in the front, um, those two light posts are the very first place to have uh, light bulbs and light in Hawaii. Uh, not in Hawaii, but in, in you know the world. Um, and Aloha Tower in the back, that's the other picture we're looking at, 1945. Man, you, you must have a collection of, of all his photos. Oh, well, I would have more. It'd be very mm -hmm. valuable, but his house burned down in a fire, so we lost a no lot way. of pictures. Yeah. Where was, where was the house? Round Top. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Where, in your guys' knowledge, where did most of Chinese live in Hawaii? Because, you know, Makiki, um, Nu'uanu, yeah, but or my they dad, were just all over. All over, because my dad was brought up in Punalu'u. And really? Yeah, so this is an actual Chinese organization, and from people from, I think, Ka'aba all the way down to uh, La'ie, like that. And by the way, I was told just last night that at least um, the, the, almost all the Hawaiians in Hawaii have... Um, uh, Chinese in them. Yeah, yeah. because it's, it's always the first thing you yeah. hear. What's it, your ethnic background? Hawaiian Chinese. Of, but because part of the exclusion act where the the, the, the men here couldn't um, go, you know, the wife were in China, so, you know, you got to have a female. <laughs> they just, I mean, Hawaiians yeah. and Chinese, they just love doing things with each other. But, they, <laughs> but uh, I was just told they, they got along well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, we're going to wrap up, but I, I want to I wanna talk really briefly and, and I want to bring you back also because a huge part of what you do as well is you're involved in, in the Miss Narcissus. Prior to Miss Narcissus, wasn't it the pageant? Wasn't it Miss Chinatown? No, actually Narcissus was, was first. The first. Yeah, I think next first next to Miss Hawaii. Uh, so we're actually the oldest ethnic next to Miss Hawaii and then the others are J Japanese Cherry Blossom and Miss Hawaii. And, that, and that's uh, what Chinatown I like followed. what you just said. It's, it's an ethnic pageant as opposed to a beauty pageant but Miss Narcissus, they were all beautiful, but they focused on ethnicity and culture, which I like. And here's a connection. We've got somebody sitting on the side who, who makes me look pretty. She was at that, that reconnection point as, as was she was a Narcissus princess. And you guys, after that, started adding classes because you re did you realize at the time that if you're going to represent the Chinese culture, you have to know the Chinese culture. Is that, that was the mindset? Yeah, but it, it, it um, yeah, because what I found out when I was running, when I was, um, I'm a contestant coordinator in a pageant, I found out people didn't know where Chinatown was. They didn't know their food. They don't <laughs> even know the names of their grandparents. Really? So as I, um, through time, I came across uh, instructors that were experts, and I go, let me add them. So I would check them out to see if they would be good lecturers. Mm -hmm. And so actually, um, so to me, my claim to fame for the chamber is that bringing in the cultural aspect I of it. And that. then I was actually, then the Japanese and Miss Chinatown followed that because I brought that in first. And I was lucky that there was a past president I asked, can I have this? And it worked out well. Can, can, you, go, well. can you go talk to those, like the, the, those other pageant organizations, like the Miss Americas and those and whatnot, right? Um, because I, I honestly, some agree with me or not, but uh, that's, what, that's what's missing from a lot of beauty pageants. Um, is culture. Yes. Right? Because it's going to die down. You, you can't yeah. have a, I, I just truly say, you can't have a sash across your yeah. chest that says Miss Hawaii or, or Miss whoever and not know anything about where you come from, right? Yes. Um, what are some of the things that you taught these, these princesses? Well, can I just... And was it a requirement? 
No, but let me tell you, um, these girls are so excited once they learn the uh, classes that. because, um, I mean, I just want to give you an example. Like, this is like professional, but you know, like pa paper cuts. Oh. They have a class in, in paper cuts. Well, really? someone made this for me, but this is the simple one. But um, because they said, the, the instructors, I always ha ask them, give history first before just teaching a class. And they said in the olden days, there was nothing else to do. You know, so you stay at home. So, you know, a grandmother, somebody comes and starts cutting paper uh, things so that's what they, so I tell people it's like snowflakes that you learn cutting snowflakes oh, in high I would, school I would it's the same fail. idea I would fail yeah. at this class <laughs> but it, it, it's the same idea <laughs> this is amazing to me yeah. so these are the things that you taught them sorry we got like a minute but okay. I'm gonna go keep going so okay, sorry well. editors um, okay real fast so they learn you know about Chinese nodding when you see it on yes. Chiang Sam but then this nodding wait hold on you just okay, mentioned so what is the name of that dress uh, uh, Chiang Sam or Chi Pao Chi Pao, okay, thank yeah. you for that. So this this instructor mimicked the coin, this coin to making it like this, to make it look like a coin, but it got too hard, so then we made this Chinese knot. So then to add this um, to their culture, I told them, let's make it into a necklace so they can wear it with their Chiang Sams when they do their public so appearances. Cool. So I'm trying to always um, incorporate, to make it look Chinese. So knotting was yes. a Chinese tradition. Right. Well, for dressmakers like right. that, but. We incorporated it. And, incorporated and was it. it just embellishment of what you used, whether it's coins, whether it's beads, or it's just... Well, in those days, it was to make, you know, those, um, like, frog buttons? Those yeah, yeah, frogs, yeah, yeah. that's the way they were. What's up with yeah. the frog in Chinese? Uh, I, th I don't know, but I don't know. <laughs> Does anybody know what's up with the frog, right? It's a, it's a good I luck thing, or it's just, mm. that's just, they like frogs. They, I don't know. Oh, I don't know about that, yeah, but... <laughs> it's kind of like in Japanese it. culture with the cat, Yeah, right? right, right, right. <laughs> but very nice, so yeah. If you are running in a narcissist pageant, you have to learn these things. Okay, I don't want to say have to because I'd I say, say have to. I say, well, <laughs> to me, I say it's your loss if you don't show up because you've been uh, missing out on something uh, great. That's even better. Yeah. You, it's your loss. Yeah, it's your loss. You yeah. don't. You cannot be Miss Narcissus, Miss Chinatown. You're like, um, Manapua? <laughs> no. You have cooking class too, right? Yeah. So really? Well, we kind of did. Okay, so just to let you know, through my 30 years, we, have, um, we lost five instructors because I got them later because they're like in their 80s and 90s. So wow. we're lucky that we've gotten this far. So we, did you guys hear that? There is generations that could be lost of culture. So if you have your gung gung, your popo, your tai gung, your tai, what's the other grandma? grandma? Taipo. Taipo. You have to make sure you sit down and talk with them to learn. Um, I want to bring you folks back because I'm always intrigued. I'm always uh, uh, I'm loving to learn about things. What else do they do? So it's a narcissus. Some of you folks uh, know the narcissus flower. And it's actually, when I smelt it, this is a sample, but during um, Chinese New Year's before that, the flowers would come from China. And I thought um, um, pikaki was sweet, but the narcissus flower is even sweeter. It's very fragrant. Where can we find it here? Well, never mind going picking them either. Well, you can't find it. It comes in from China. Really? Yeah. So it's not, and so because of the pandemic, they couldn't bring it out of China. So we don't know what's going to happen for next year. But the narcissus flower usually actually grows tall like a, um, like an onion plant. I was just going to say, how come it looks like so onion? So I want to tell you, this is what they learned in class. It's called narcissus crab claw, like a crab claw like that. So it's like a Japanese bonsai where you where you uh, stunt the growth of it a certain way, you cut it, and it'll grow like a crab claw. So right now, we have an instructor that because we don't have the narcissus flowers coming in, um, he brings in American one, so they, and they, it's the same idea, but that one has no um, smell. fragrant smell, mm -hmm. yeah. But that's why they call it crab claw. Because it's an American one, yeah. I'm just kidding. But it comes out <laughs> during Chinese New Year's though. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. How do you say thank you in, in see? But even as, I, I don't even want to say Chinese because it's not Chinese. It's either Mandarin or you know. Yeah. So Cantonese is doje, and then uh, Mandarin is xie xie. Xie xie. Mahalo, mahalo, mahalo for you folks hanging out with me. You just dropped some major knowledge on me and all of our audience. Um, I want to bring you folks back because I want to talk a little bit more about um, learning Chinese if anybody's interested or even that. Um, so Michelle, Linda, mahalo. Thank you guys for being here. This is Culturize. Hopefully you learned something. Mm -hmm.